Chapter 3 A Temporary Hideout Late that night, I phoned my older sister. Mother had gone to the home of my sister and her husband at Jungju earlier in the day and was very concerned about me. It was decided that I, too, should go there. At the moment, it was still quiet in the area where my sister lived, so I would be safer there. I knew I could not stay long with Kyungshin because it would not be fair to her. I've heard there are no policemen on the last train, my sister told me. If you hurry, I believe you can make it. Although Kyungshin was disappointed that I was leaving so soon, she understood. I found a seat in an obscure corner of the train and hunched into it. It seemed to have been waiting in the station just for me. As soon as I was aboard the train, it began to move, gathering speed quickly in the dark night. This world is as dark as this night, I told myself. Everything on either side of the train was wrapped in shadows as black as an evil man's soul, but the sky was punctured with light as bright as ten thousand times ten thousand jewels, gleaming with God's glory. True faith should be like those stars, I thought, shining even brighter as the world becomes darker. I closed my eyes and began to pray. When we got to the Jungju station, a messenger sent by my sister soon found me and took me over to where she was waiting for me in the darkness. She had brought their three German shepherd dogs with her. They were like so many faithful servants. She never went anywhere without them. Although Jungju was still comparatively quiet, it had all the curiosity and loose tongues so characteristic of most small towns. My sister was extremely cautious lest my arrival would become known. That was the second reason for having me come late at night. Taking off her shawl, she put it on my shoulders. Then, with great care in order to walk as quietly as possible, we made our way through the sleeping town to her home. The entire family was awake and waiting for us, but our first greeting was from the flock of geese she kept in the grassy area between her house and three factories which her husband owned and operated. They began to honk imperiously at the first sound of our footsteps, like dogs jealously guarding their master. That's enough, my sister ordered, and they quieted immediately. Seeing mother, I wanted to cry for joy. I knew that her heart always was looking toward God. When we were alone at last, I told her all that had happened since I had been taken to the district director. I am so thankful that God made you, who are a weak one, to act so quickly, she said joyfully. It is indeed a miracle. Praying with one mind that God would lead us according to His will, we left everything in His hands. I was to learn later that the geese remained silent as the family came and went. Only when a stranger approached did they set up a clamor. Since there were usually visitors in the house, the geese protested their presence almost incessantly. The German shepherd dogs walked about like well-trained guards. They were given certain food at a specific time and were trained to never eat anything else offered to them. They ate in order of their age, the oldest eating his food first while the other two waited. Then the second oldest ate. When they both had their fill, it was time for the youngest to eat. Both the geese and the dogs knew their masters and served them, I observed. It helped me to realize clearly how I must faithfully serve my God, who had created me and saved me. Mother, my sister, and I would faithfully serve God, who had given the life of his only begotten Son, to save us from sin and hell. It was beautiful at my sister's, and I had plenty of time to read the Bible, but as one monotonous day followed another, I began to feel uncomfortable about staying there. My sister had her own family, and I wanted to be alone with mother in a more quiet place. Even their expensive food was not the type which we enjoyed. My sister understood our feelings, so it was decided that we would look for a house in a quiet area in the country and move there. Happily, my brother-in-law also agreed.